Hey everyone, Dave here, the NC Picker, back in my garage, like always, to ship some eBay orders. It's Sunday, Monday for you, and, well, hopefully, if I actually get this edited in time and uploaded, we'll see. Oh, but yeah, I did get some eBay orders, I did some sourcing, I did no listing. <laughs> Tina did some listing, though, so we got a bunch of orders to pull. I've had, like, a, a bit of a stressful day just because of all the preparing for my big trip. Dave's big trip. I'm like a kid. I've got a big day coming up and my big day is traveling. So let's pull the first order. Let me check and make sure my audio is working. Hold on. All right. So anyways, let's pull our first order. I think my audio is working. The little meters are going off. Okay. So let's pull our first order out of FL98. Oh man. It's been a crazy one of those weekends. Look at this. This is like a, a death trap here. That little thing. Got to move it out of my way. It's been a bit of a crazy weekend and it's it's not even a crazy weekend where I feel like I got a lot done. It's more like a crazy weekend where I feel like I didn't get a lot done. Is that corner still dark? It is still dark. Anyways, but we did sell some stuff. So let's pull our orders and we'll talk about them. We'll go from there. So first up is this uh, jacket. This is a Harley Davidson branded jacket. I got it at a thrift store in uh, Daytona Beach actually, which they've got a lot of water problems right now. Harley Davidson, and this is a heated jacket. You can tell because it's got the little thing and the power button and, you know, these for your gloves. Now, I don't know if that works technically. Uh, what did I write in the listing? Hold on, let me check. Oh yeah, I said, I'm not 100% sure how these work, but I think it needs one more cable to connect to a power source and I don't have that cable. And I had it listed, I think for 90, no 80, for 80 bucks. Someone sent me a best offer of, an, of 60, and I accepted. Now I paid 20 for it. So bought it for 20, sold it for 60. Nice profit. I imagined a little more profit when I bought it because I thought it had all the pieces, but when I was Googling it and trying to like figure out what it was worth, I noticed a missing cable. And that's why I put that in the listing. And for that matter, there's a camera my mom recently found when we were at a yard sale that looked like it was pretty valuable. But once I actually got home and I ordered some film, I actually ordered film for it. It was a Polaroid um land camera sx70 i'll put like a comp here or something so you can see what i'm talking about but i was really excited when i found this because we look it up and it turns out it's worth like 200 bucks 200 plus bucks uh, so i had to buy some film for it we only paid a dollar for the camera so it was super cheap so i said okay i'll buy some film it's 25 bucks for eight photographs of film 25 dollars for just a, a thing with eight pictures in it and uh ordered that got it in yesterday tested it wasn't working, wasn't taking pictures, watched a bunch of YouTube tutorials, tried to fix it, got it to the point where it was taking pictures if I removed one part, and then the pictures were overexposed because that part was letting light in, so the pictures didn't look good. Then I got that part back in, and right as I got it back in, I ran out of the eight photos. So if I wanna finish testing it, I think it, I think it might be fixed now, but if I wanna check that, I gotta buy $25 more with a film, which I don't really wanna do. So I might just list it as, uh, you know, not working. I could show a picture of the the photos that I took that were overexposed, and I bet I could still get like 100, 150 bucks for it, but mm, I don't think I want to invest another $25 just in case I didn't fix it proper. I sold Black Sabbath uh, CD Paranoid. This one's worth a lot on record. I think like 30 bucks if you find that record, but on CD, it's only worth 534. But I will say this. I'm pretty sure this is the one where the non-paper version of it is worth quite a bit. Let me check. Eh, maybe not, maybe not. I don't think that's it. Tina was showing me one yesterday that she looked up and the non-paper version was worth a lot. I'll have to ask her if it was something else or what the deal was. For some reason, I thought it was this. It could be this one. It might be like a specific, the first press, $34. So maybe that, that was it, I can't remember. Useless Bolo, here we go, yeah, $18. So there's some version of that that's worth money. Uh, not the one I have. The one I have sold for five. I think I already said that. Just being thorough. But yeah, I'm headed out tomorrow. Today for you, FL14. I'll be honest, I'm a little concerned. I've been seeing a lot of things on TikTok. That's, you know, where I get my news, which is a horrible idea because I'm pretty sure the whole reason for TikTok to exist is to stress me out. But I've been letting myself get stressed out about my flight a little bit because they're saying that there might be like a pilot strike where all the pilots stop flying because they want more money or something. I don't know. I don't really know what the strike is for. But anyways, they're talking about some sort of strike and over like the holiday weekends or weeks. And I am going to be traveling, not on purpose. This is just the way it worked out. But the Sunday 
before Thanksgiving is my flight home to North Carolina. I don't live in North Carolina. My flight home to Florida is that Sunday before Thanksgiving. And I'm a little concerned that I might get stuck in Los Angeles, which really, what's worse than stuck in LA for a holiday? <laughs> no offense, LA people. <laughs> yeah, it's just expensive. I guess I'll just use my company's money. I'll have to. I can't afford to stay in a hotel over there for a week or something if something happened. Um, I don't see this item. Dang it. Okay, so maybe we'll pull that in a minute. Maybe I'm looking in the wrong bin. I'm confused. Let me check one more thing. No, I don't see it. Okay, well, we'll pull that order a little bit later because I can't find it. FL14, it's supposed to be in there. Maybe if I look at a picture of it, it'll help. Hold on, put that on my camera and try. You know, I think some people might underestimate how hard it is to pull orders with one hand. Once I had two hands, I was successful. Quake hold furniture safety strap. Speaking of California, that's for earthquakes. And let's see, is it going to California? I'm gonna check. Sold that for $6.99 and it's headed to California. Look at that, I should just fly it over there. All right, I did wanna to talk to you about some drama at the flea market as always. When I go to the flea market, there's always gonna be drama. So we'll talk about that in a minute. And uh, yeah, we'll talk about my weekend, things like that. And just eBay as a whole, FL33 is our next order. Yeah, so this weekend I did go yard sailing yesterday with my mom, Saturday. And then, oh look. Look, he does a little dance, too. Oh. <laughs> Chill, Frosty. Let me turn him off. Should probably take the batteries out, honestly. But anyways, I sold this Pet Armor Plus. What is this? For medium dogs, flea, egg, larvae, larvae, larva? Uh, killer? I don't know. Kills fleas. Sold for 15 bucks plus shipping. Hey, so far, at least it's small stuff. Okay, so oh, I just thought of like six things at once. Love your brain, right? All brains are great brains. First thing. I did a whatnot auction, just randomly out of the blue, clear blue sky, I'm sitting there Friday night. I'm up in my office, I'm like, man, I've got so much good stuff up here that's cluttering up my office. Like, I wanna clean my office, but I shouldn't bring this stuff back downstairs because this stuff is good stuff, right? Like, I should list it on eBay, I should sell it because it's nice items, right? Like, I had a record lot, like a bunch of 45 LP, like, singles. Oh, shoebox shoe box full of them up there. Uh, a whole bunch of what are they called? Um, OMG surprise, like a big Ziploc bag full of them. And you know, a lot of those are worth like five to 10 bucks a piece, FL9, five to 10 bucks a piece. I'm like, man, I, I really should like list these, but I, the idea of listing, I probably had like 70 to a hundred items up there. More than that, right? Probably like 150 items up there that I needed to list. And I was just like, I don't have the time or the energy or the motivation to list all these. Maybe I should just do a whatnot. <laughs> to clear out some space and to just like start over up here. And so that's what I did. And I didn't like even warn you guys. Some of you showed up anyways. I appreciate that, seriously. That's awesome. But I just randomly decided to do it. Friday night, I think like six o'clock, I made the decision that I was gonna do this auction on whatnot. And uh, I just went on Instagram and I said, hey guys, I'm gonna do an auction. I scheduled it on whatnot. And I, I think the way I titled it was important because I got a lot of people and people I hadn't seen before showed up too. And I think my title, my auction title was a big part of that, but I'll tell you about that. Basically, I titled it Toys, Random Items, Fun Stuff, Low Starting Bid, No Nonsense, right? That's how I titled it. I thought that was a good title. No nonsense at all. This auction's a real auction, no nonsense. Because Whatnot has become like this cesspool of home shopping network nonsense. Let me explain that, because a lot of words I said really quick. Uh, Rosie the Riveter action figure sold for, how much did it sell for? Five bucks plus shipping, really cool. And with this, somebody actually sent me a message. Her name is Brigida. Okay, Brigida was actually the one who won Back to the Future guy, right? Uh, Doc Brown, Emmett Brown. And she had been emailing me, but I had not been seeing her emails because it had been going to spam. So she bought this and left me a message in the order saying, Dave, I'm the one, don't give it to someone else. So thank you for Brigida. I'm sorry that the spam filter was doing that, but I will pack them together and I'll ship them both out to you. Congrats on winning. Doc Emmett Brown is on his way to you. So anyways, I've like, <laughs> I have so much to talk about. Some some part of this I'm ashamed of when it comes to the whatnot. Um, and then some part I'm not. So we're gonna talk about all that. And don't let me forget to do the flea market thing. I wonder if I should split this into two videos. I might, depending on how long this takes, because I'm gonna be traveling. So maybe it would make sense to split it into two 18 minute videos or something. I don't know if I'll talk that long. I might, you never know. It might be a short, concise video. We'll see. So I did my auction and I called it No Nonsense because honestly, I have seen so much nonsense on whatnot lately, okay? Whatnot is a cool tool. It's not perfect. I've complained about it before and complaining doesn't solve anything. I know guys, you shouldn't even really complain if you can help it. But every now and then I've complained about whatnot. Oh, I can't fit my ladder. And 
Oh, that's heavy. So one night I've got this issue, it's turned into just really lame. <laughs> I can't think of any other way to say it. I called it a cesspool of home shopping, shopping network nonsense, right? That could be my tagline for them. Maybe I could do a commercial for them. I'm sure they'd love that. But the reason I say that is because when you go on there in so many categories, not sports cards particularly, um, but in mo a lot of categories, uh, action figures, toys, Disney, um, lounge fly, and I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Uh, you go into these categories and no one's actually running auctions. They're just sitting there showing you their stuff and saying, what do you guys want me to run? What, what would you buy? And, you know, should I run this? Anyone want this? Anyone interested? I'm selling this. Oh, and I'm doing these, uh, this drawing. So buy this like $5 item that I made myself, okay? You'll be entered to win a prize for free. So it's like a $5 entry, which seriously feels like gambling. Just saying, <laughs> just saying whatnot. There might be some illegal gambling happening on your site. Uh, this guy sold. He is... Pods, P-O-D-Z, Land on Earth, Sea Mummy Stone Vintage Toy, Pods Rare Collectible, sold for 20 bucks. I got them in a 50 cent bin at a yard sale and I thought he reminded me of something and sure enough, sold for 20 bucks. Am I missing something Ooh, here? and he talks. He wants to know if he's missing something here. How did I make him do that? Maybe you hit him? I don't know. Huh, weird. Did I put works? It does work, but only sometimes. Battery's probably almost dead. Hey, show some respect here. Dude, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to not show respect. He just told me to show some respect. I guess he, like, when you place him down, he freaks out. Okay. I've, I'm to this point now where if you're on whatnot, like, it's it's basically a buy it now home shopping network. Like, I, my grandma used to watch it. She kind of got bamboozled. And we'd go over her house and she'd have, like, 10 packages from home shopping net network and be a collectible coin, you know, limited edition, blah, blah, blah. And it's got, like, no value, right? Like, and she passed away a couple of years back. And, you know, we went through this stuff and so much of this stuff that she had bought from the Home Shopping Network has like no value at all. And so anyways, it feels, and I'm not saying nothing on whatnot has value, but just like I would watch her watch the show and she would just sit there and they'd just rave and rant about whatever item they're holding up, right? Like this is a, you know, limited edition one time. You're never gonna get another chance to get this and look at the beautiful beadwork and look at the uh, whatever else. And I can't reach that from here, I go on this side. Uh, look at look at the gorgeous bubbles here. These bubbles are beautiful and, and filled in just the right amount, right? I'm Home Shopping Network, guys. American Bubble Boy, my link down below. You get some discount. <laughs> so it's like, that. that's my thing, right? Whatnot now feels like that. Go into like the Disney pins auctions and they're like, oh, this is a beautiful one. This one's a blind bag. This one's, I don't know. Anyway, I'm, I'm just ranting. I'm just saying nonsense. But what I'm trying to get across is Whatnot isn't what it once was. It's not like this place you can go and just buy a bunch of stuff and bid on stuff. Like that's kind of the thing of the past. I think I sold this. This is adorable if I did. Let me see, was it a pig that sold? It was. This is like the cuter than the NC piggy. How do I get some of these? This is a Cutitos basic piggy. He's so soft too, adorable. Pig, pig, pig. So anyways, that, that's what Whatnot's turned into at this point. So that's why I decided to name mine No Nonsense Low Starts, you know, so people would see I'm actually doing an auction on there because, and I think honestly it got me a bunch of extra viewers. I've never been able to just post on Instagram I'm going live on Whatnot and get 80 people in my stream. If I talk about it on here and on my NC Picker, you know, then I can get 80 to 100 people show up for my Whatnot, but not just like post it on an Insta story and get it. Like not even that many people had watched that story by the time I went live. So I really do think a big part of that traffic was because my title was intriguing, right? All that to say, I, I just wanted stuff gone. And I think this is how I need to think about whatnot. And I know like most of us know this, right? Whatnot, you're not going to get top dollar. You're going to get more money on eBay, Mercari, Poshmark. You're going to get more money on those sites. But the benefit of whatnot is I have 150 items sitting in my office that have been sitting there for six months. I quickly take a picture and list them all on my whatnot and boom, 75 sales by the end of the night. And that's what happens. I sold 75 items. And that is why I'm navigating around a giant box fort here. These are all my whatnot sales from that night. And not everything went for what it would go for on eBay. Most of it didn't. Most, for, most of it went for significantly less than eBay, but some went for more than eBay. Actually, the one thing that I think went for more than eBay value, I dropped and broke when I was shipping it. So I thought that was cool. Like instead of like listing, I was able to just sell 75 items for a decent amount of money. I mean, and there were some, some really nice items. When I say 75 items, I mean 75 auctions, but a lot of them were lots of items, right? So like I'd have a Ziploc bag like this full of OMG surprise 
And, you know, I think that sold for like 35 bucks. If you resell that, I think you'll probably get 70 to 80, maybe 100 maybe a hundred bucks, depending on what's in there. I had a big bag of Monster High stuff that had an actual Monster High doll, all these accessories, and it sold for 30 bucks, right? So those would bring up my average buy price for sure. But I think I brought in $700 in two hours from the stuff that had just been sitting up there waiting to be listed for six months. And now I've got a bunch of space up there. Anyways, I'm excited about that. That was like a reselling win for me. And I need to do it more. Like I need to just do a pop-up auction on whatnot and just say, hey, I'm doing an auction. Even if stuff sells for two bucks, that's fine. I just need to move it, right? Sold this Niffler on eBay though for 15 bucks plus shipping. So here's another cool sale from the whatnot. And this sold for more than I expected. This is a Harley Davidson King Classic. I got this at the flea market. Maybe one of you remembers what I paid. I was talking to them about how I don't remember. It was anywhere from 10 to 20, probably closer to 20, but maybe 15, I don't know. Can't remember what I paid, but I was like, you know what? I'm never gonna list this. I just need to sell it. And so I put it on the auction and it sold for $50 actually, you know, which is great. Jeff bought it. Thank you, Jeff, if you're watching, I appreciate the bid. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's really cool to me, right? I mean, I think on eBay, it sells for closer to 80 or a hundred bucks, but to get 50 for it really fast, that was awesome. Like I had put, and you can change your starting price. It's not supposed to be a whatnot commercial. I'm actually supposed to be fussing about whatnot, but I was, I was just going to say this one last thing about it. With that one, that was the one item I started at the most money. Like, hey, it, I really wanted to sell for this much or I'd rather not sell it. And that amount was $10. So it really wasn't that much, but anyways, just... I had felt guilty that I was starting it at $10, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, yeah, it's already been 20 minutes. I knew I was gonna talk my brain off. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull one more order. I'm gonna finish out the whatnot thing I wanna talk about, the thing I'm ashamed of about whatnot. And then in next video, we'll talk about the flea market drama. So make sure you watch both because the flea market drama is pretty funny too. Um, okay, so let's pull like one more order while I tell you about this new whatnot thing. I'm kinda, I don't know what's wrong with me. I really don't know what's wrong with me. Okay, so. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I do and I don't. Carrie American Arbitrage was having a whatnot auction. And during his whatnot auction, he sold like a lounge fly type backpack. Now, as you guys know, I go to theme parks all the time, Disney and Universal and stuff like that. And I think the lounge fly backpacks are really cool, but they're super overpriced. Now, what's a lounge fly backpack? A lot of people won't know. So it's like a little tiny backpack, like, you know, this big but you wear it, it's got like full size straps, it's like made for adults or kids. And usually they're, they're very themed, right? Themed towards a Disney character or a universal thing or whatever you may want to say. I can't remember, did I say I sold this for $15? He's got a little pouch. He's a Niffler from uh, Harry Potter. So, you know, let me show you an example and you know, a million tabs open, but it's these little backpacks, right? Like shaped like an Ewok or shaped like Mandalorian or shaped like, not shaped like, but with a, uh, you know, Star Wars pattern or you know, uh, what's that, Mulan pattern, whatever it is, right? That's that's a lounge fly backpack. And I've always thought those were really neat when I go to theme parks, right? I've always liked those, always wanted them, but at Disney, they go for 110. Universal, they're $88. So I could never justify actually buying one of those. Carrie has an auction. It wasn't a lounge fly, but it was like that. And I think I want it for like $10. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I would like to get some more of those. I'd love to get one for Anna and Callie. And, you know, I just think they look cool. I don't know, like, it's a weird thing for a 38 year old guy to think is really cool, but I do think they're pretty cool. <laughs> I'm kind of a nerd. Okay, and so this is why I'm a little embarrassed because I'm admitting to you that I'm, I'm kind of into like lounge fly backpacks to the point where I was like, I wonder if I can find more on whatnot because I got this one from Carrie. It was a pretty good deal. Maybe I can find some more. So I go to the lounge fly category and this is kind of what set me off on my whole rant about whatnot being kind of awful because everyone selling lounge fly is just sitting there with like a bunch of lounge flies behind them saying, hey, let me know if you want me to run anything. Let me know if you want me to run anything. Just like, that's all they're ever doing, right? Let me know if you want me to run anything. This thing is bad because I just like hang on it. Someone sent me a, an idea of how to get rid of it, uh, but I'll do that later. And so I go in there and I'm like watching and it's working on me. <laughs> <laughs> this is why people do it because idiots like me go in there and I'm like, man, I do really like that Beetlejuice one they've got. I wonder, wonder how much that one is. And I, you know, I started off, I'm like, can you run the Beetlejuice bag, right? Can you run it at auction so I can bid on it? And I'm like, yep, we'll run it. We'll run the Beetlejuice and they put it up and it's $35. That's their start price, which technically is a good deal on a lounge fly, but it was like, it took all the fun out of it. Like starting it that high, I went and looked on eBay and that one sells for like 50 to 60 on eBay, right? So it's a good deal. It is legitimately a good deal. And so I was like, okay, well maybe I'll bid on it. And I bid on it and no one else bids. No one at all bids on this thing, just me. And I'm like, oh, I guess I have a Beetlejuice lounge fly. 
and I just kept doing it. And it's like, I feel like I'm an addict, right? Like I just like got into this lounge fly shopping spree. And over the next two nights, I think I felt like my grandma. I was on the home shopping network and I was being bamboozled into buying lounge flies for two nights straight. And I think I ended up ordering, not all of them for 35, some for 25, some for 30. One I paid 40 for. Okay, but I think I ended up ordering like nine lounge flies. A lot of money, like an insane amount of money on lounge flies. And I'm, I keep justifying like, well, I'm gonna resell them. I'm gonna resell them. You know, I can sell them for 50 to 60 bucks, which isn't even a good profit, but I just kept buying them because I was like having fun, right? And I mean, I guess I was having fun. So that's something like I'm paying. Why was I having fun? Because like the, the, the rush of winning even though no one was bidding against me? What's wrong with me, guys? This is a question. This is not why you're here. You're not here to be my therapist, but I think I need one when it comes to this lounge fly thing. For some reason, I'm getting hooked in by the, the home shopping networkedness of whatnot, which is not what it was supposed to be, but now it's what it's become. And if I go into the lounge fly auction, I'm so weak. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like my grandma watching the coin auctions. Every single thing the Franklin Mint created for a one-time presidential celebration coin, she owned. And I'm like turning into that with lounge fly, so I've got to stop. But here's my real question. Let's get to reselling, okay? Maybe I'll pull one more order while I ask this question. Okay, yeah, we're gonna pull Crystal's shirt. Crystal, a viewer uh, from Illinois, bought a t-shirt, as uh, NC Picker one, for $22. Thank you, Crystal. Yeah, so here's the real question. Where are these people? Uh, uh, clearly I've discovered I have a weird um, enjoyment of lounge flies, right? Like, here you go, NC Picker t-shirt sold. Thank you, Crystal. I'll pack that up for you tonight. Obviously I have this weird, like, random, Enjoyment of lounge flies. So I kind of like it as, you know, a niche, right? Like yeah, Disney memorabilia, two pins, stuff like that. I'm enjoying selling that stuff. So my question is, how are they sourcing? Do any of you know where these people are getting lounge flies so that they can take them? Because remember, the only place I ever see them is like at Universal Studios and loungefly.com and Disney World. And when I look at them there, they're like, 80 to 100 bucks a lot of the times. So where are people buying them that they can auction them off for 30 to $35 and make a profit on whatnot? Like, how do I get in with that? If I really enjoy selling them, I would love to figure out how to source them to actually profitably flip them, as opposed to what I've been doing this last week, which is really just bad shopping addiction stuff, like uh, hoarding lounge fly backpacks for no good reason. I don't ever need like nine lounge fly backpacks. Now, I will say this, I think I'm gonna give some as gifts at uh, Christmas. And I might keep a couple like the Harry Potter one and the Beetlejuice one and um, maybe the Lion King one <laughs> and put it in my office as like a decoration. But is that weird for a grown man to collect lounge flies? Oh gosh, so many thumbs down on this video already. I can sense it. But if you guys have any info on that, how are people sourcing lounge fly and flipping it for a profit? Because I'm not really sure how they're managing it. And I would like to know for a friend, not for me. Okay, that's the end of this one. We're going to be back tomorrow because I got to tell you this flea market story and I got a bunch more orders to pull. But uh I don't want to go like four hours in this video. So we'll see you next time. Make sure you subscribe, hit the like button. Bye-bye.